guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be going over my contemporary a -thon TBR. that I have done a contemporary thon. This is my first year on booktube and so I'm very into these sort of readathons that have been going on. I did booktube a thon earlier this year, absolutely loved it. And I don't read contemporary books as often as I read other ones, uh, specifically like young adult, sci-fi, fantasy, that kind of stuff. So I figured this would actually be a really, really good one to do. I've also been in a little bit of a reading slump lately and so I have a few books that I have recently purchased that I know are contemporary and so I've actually been saving them. I just bought some of these even yesterday and so I am super excited about this contemporary a -thon. Um, They do have seven challenges that you are trying to complete over a whole week of reading. This year's contemporary a -thon is going from September 17th through September 23rd. So we are very, very close to the start of it and I'm very excited. Without further ado, we're gonna jump right on into these. I did wanna specify that for some of these books, they actually do fit multiple challenges. However, I did pick one for each challenge. That way I have seven books that I'm going to be trying to read for the contemporary a -thon. The first challenge is to read a book with orange on the cover. And for that, we are going to be going with Lucky Few by Katherine Ormsby. This is a book that I purchased in a book outlet one. I want to say earlier this year or late last year and I just haven't picked it up yet. I am going with the orange because of this here, but also it has a really, really pretty orange spine. This is a book that, from what I remember, is about a group of friends, I believe, who one of them starts to, I think he's just like trying to come to terms with mortality and decides that there are a few different ways of dying that he really wants to like, fake. I'm tr I don't even know a good way to specify this, but apparently there's a list of ways to die that this character wants to try, but at the same time he's faking it. So it's not like they're actually killing anybody or anything like that, but it also I believe is going to have a bit of romance in here, so it is a very interesting sort of book. I don't know how heavy hitting it's going to be or not, but this is going to be the one for the orange on the cover. The second challenge was to read a contemporary that was more of like dark, spooky, or taboo. And for that one, I'm going to be reading Sadie by Courtney Summers. This actually just came in the very first unplugged book box. I'm going to link that video down below in case you guys have not seen that yet. But it is a very recent release, just came out at the beginning of September, and I'm super excited about this. This is a story about Sadie, who from my understanding ends up running away from home after the murder of her little sister, and I think she's going to try and get revenge or something like that, so this sounds very interesting. Also, because it came in the Unplugged book box, we also have this like letter here for after we finish the book. So I'm very interested to see what the book is all about, but also what is in there. The third challenge is to read a contemporary that is diverse. So I'm gonna be reading Running With Lions by Julian Winter. This, I believe, is a self-published book, but it is all about a soccer team. It's about a goalie, so I'm assuming soccer. Um, from what I understand, this, this is going to be a contemporary that centers around a soccer team, specifically, I guess, the goalie, and this is going to be LGBTQ, but also I believe the love interest is a person of color as well. So I think this is going to be a really, really nice, I'm hoping, sort of cute, diverse read. Challenge four was to read a book in a non-traditional format. For that, I'm gonna be reading the second volume of Wotakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku. This is written by Fujita. This is a manga, however, the original, like, first half, I believe, of the first volume was also a webcomic. So this definitely fits the unconventional type of book because it is not a normal book. They mostly just want you to be reading something that's in a different format, like audiobook, ebook, manga, graphic novel, something to that effect. So this is the one I'm gonna be going with. This is the second volume of it, and I really liked the first one enough to continue with the second one. This is about two sort of, I think they're co-workers, but they're also otaku. They don't have the best relationship with other people because they feel like those 
normal people don't understand them very well and so they end up getting into a relationship with each other however we haven't really seen any sort of like real like romantic relationship sort of feelings yet so i'm very interested to see what's going to happen in this one challenge five was the absolute hardest for me because that was to find a contemporary with your initials on the cover my initials are c and z and that z i think was what killed it for me so out of all the books that I own that are contemporary and everything like that. I even went through my ebooks. I was trying to find a book with those initials on the cover somewhere. That includes author name, title, any sort of like caption or anything on the book. And I had the darndest time trying to find this. I eventually found two in my entire collection and ebooks that could have worked and they are both actually rereads so i decided to pick one that i have not read the most recently like this is one that i haven't read since i want to say say maybe like the end of high school maybe beginning of college or so and so i am going to be reading memoirs of a teenage amnesiac by gabrielle zevin so for my c we had it in the end of amnesiac for N, we have it in Zevin, also Teenage and Amnesiac, and then for the Z, we have it in Zevin. Um, the Z was the hardest one. It ended up being for the two books that I actually did have that were contemporary. The Z was part of the author's last name. I did not find anything else that also worked with the title. This was the hardest challenge, but I am sort of excited to give a reread to a book that I remember really enjoying way back when. It's probably been at least eight, nine, ten years since I've read this. For the sixth challenge, it is to read a new to you author, and for that one, I'm gonna be reading The Chase by L. Kennedy. This is the first book in the Briar U series. Um, this is an author who I have heard lots of things about, and one of my coworkers at work absolutely loves her. Um, she does do adult, new adult romances, and this is the first in a series that I think is technically a spin-off of one of her other series. Um, and this is the one that we actually had in hardcover at my Barnes & Noble. The other one, we did have the first one to the first series that was part of this, but it was sold out when I was buying books. And this one actually sounds a little bit more up my alley. I have heard they're all standalone, so I can read them all separately. But this one actually is going to be following a girl who moves in with her brother and his roommate in college. And the roommate is a hockey player because all of L. Kennedy's books that are in this world are about hockey players. And I believe the love interest hockey player is also like a geek. He plays video games, he has tattoos. So he's this big amalgamation of something that I feel is gonna be very, very interesting. I also love the fact that he is technically her roommate I think it's her brother's best friend, so there might be some sort of forbidden romance element to this. So I'm very excited to pick this up. And then last but not least, the final challenge was to pick a book that you predict is going to be a five-star read for you. And for that one, I picked What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. This is an ARC copy that I did receive from my Barnes & Noble. I love it when we actually get ARC copies there at work that I absolutely am looking forward to, and this is one of them. This is a book that is going to be coming out, I believe it is on October 9th. It is written both by Becky Albertalli, who also wrote Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and The Upside of Unrequited, and also Adam Silvera, who wrote More Happy Than Not, and they both die at the end. These are authors that are just so good individually that I'm so interested to see what they're going to be doing together. From my understanding, this is going to follow two different characters, Ben and Arthur, who I guess have a sort of meet cute. And so that is all I really know about it. I think, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this is some sort of romance. However, we have two authors that have very different styles of endings. And so I don't think anybody really knows what we're fully getting into with this, but I cannot wait, and I'm so excited to have my hands on this. I don't think I'm going to be reading this last during my TBR. It might be one of the first ones I read because I'm just so hyped for this, but I am predicting right now it's going to be a five-star read. I am ready for this. So those are all the books that I'm going to be attempting to read for the contemporary -a -thon. This is a seven-day challenge. I'm hoping to get through seven books. We will definitely see on that. 
But if you guys want to join us with this as well, I'm going to leave the link down below for all the information on it. I am ready for this. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a vlog up right after the end of it. I have not gotten the hang of daily vlogs yet. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Leave me a comment down below if you're going to be participating in this readathon. And if you are, what kind of books you want to read. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos. I do have videos up every Monday and Thursday. So I will see you then. Bye.